You are listening to a MetalExpressRadio.com interview. Enjoy. Hi, this is Mick Burgess, and I'm joined today by Marco Mendoza from the Dead Daisies. Marco, it's great to see you again. Good to see you again, too, bro. Good to be here. Um, you're a few shows into your latest UK tour. How, how have they been going so far? It's been over the top, overwhelming their reception, to be honest. Yeah. Sold out shows, people singing your songs, the new album, you know, uh, make some noise, it's just doing really well. So we're really happy, to yeah. say the least. We're, we're jazzed. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Because you joined on the on the two by co-headliners, The Answer. Yes. You know, it's, it's a great lineup. Did you, were you involved in putting that lineup together, or was uh, this something the promoters pitched to you? No, we um, we always talk. You know, management always picks our brains mm. about what's going on, what would work. I mean, there's a business side to it, and logistics, and all that, and who's available mm-hmm. for the time, for the you know, for the dates, and all that. So that goes into play. But uh, I had my experience with The Answer with Thin Lizzy actually yes, in yes. Ireland. And I always found them to be great, great band and fun guys are really cool cats and I really love what they do. So the surprise was Lynn, you know, Lynn that's uh, opening the shows and she's, what a great singer, man, amazing singer. So um, we're having a blast so far. This will be show number four. So we're just getting the wheels turning, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how, how's the the two working out each night? Are, is it, are you alternating the headlining? The, the we are. Spot? Yeah. Uh, this is something that that was talked about carefully, <clears throat> and for a lot of reasons, um, it's only fair. You know, the answer has quite a following, and they've been around, and out of mutual respect and. No matter how you look at it, we're all geezers here. I mean, we all come from other bands that have been around mm. for 80 years or so. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, we're relatively, we're considered a new band, a new yeah. act. So it's only, it, it works. Yeah. Because they get the headline, we get the clothes for them, they get to open it for us, vice versa. They have the time to go signing and get the fans excited. We have the same time. Uh, and then Lynn does really great with her merch. And it's a great package, yeah, to be yeah. honest. It's so so what, what's the arrangement for tonight? Who's, our, who's closing the show tonight? We start tonight. Because the, the Dead Daisies, it was originally formed as a sort, of, a sort of concept of a sort of revolving door of musicians who come in and go out as and when commitments um, allowed. I mean, yeah. It, it, is the, the, the touring lineup this time the same that made the uh, Make Some Noise album, though, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I'll explain a little bit about that. <clears throat> it comes down to where it started and how it started. Mm. David Lowy, our guitar player, founder, and John Stevens are from Australia, started writing, they got together, did a few shows, they put a, a band together of sorts, but they more than anything, they wanted to write and record. Mm. And so they did. And all of a sudden they have an album, they don't have a band, uh, the opportunity comes up to maybe get on some cool tours there in Australia. And so I was touring with Thin Lizzy, Motley Crue Kiss tour package, and David was opening up with his band, another project, even yet another project. <laughs> <clears throat> so we hit it off, and uh, before you know it, uh, you know they're calling me in LA saying, "Hey, we're, we got some dates coming up. We need to kind of increase the profile with names in the band to open up for Aerosmith." I'm going, Aerosmith? I think I'll make time. <laughs> so um, I changed a few of the things. Uh, I had some recording with Neil Sean mm-hmm. and with Dolores O'Reilly from the Cranberry. Yeah. So yeah. I, I called them. They're all my friends, and I said, "Listen, I have, I just need two weeks, man. We're doing seven shows. I said, Go ahead." So we changed our schedule around a little bit, and I was in Australia. And I got to tell you, Mike, from the moment we got into this rehearsal, there was something very special going on. Mm-hmm. It was like, "Wow, this is really cool." Again, Richard Fortis was there. Uh, Dizzy Reed from Guns N' Roses um, joined up later on. Uh, you know, Brian Tishy and Frank Ferrer from Guns and Brian. I think it was Charlie uh, Drake was in. Tra- uh, yeah, Charlie yeah, yeah, Drake yeah, yeah. was uh, scheduled to be there. Mm. But if you recall, his his girl was in. Not in she ended up passing away. No, 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 no. no. Yeah, <clears throat> so he ended up canceling. But so, needless to say, if we show up after two or three shows opening up for Aerosmith, we're all looking at each other going, this could be something really cool, you know? Why don't we look and see if we can continue booking some shows? And a few months passed, and all of a sudden we had 
you know, we had a, a big tour in the U.S. with uh, Alice in Chains and uh, Chains Addiction. Mm. Very cool. That's great. Uproar. It was another called, great tour together. Yeah, it was yeah. called called the Uproar Tour. Mm. It was ver very happy. So. so then we had a chance to kind of establish a little bit of a thing in the U.S. and people go, wow, this is cool, this is cool. We went into the studio, just in passing, and recorded The Face I Love, that album, that EP, actually. Yeah. That was released and, it, you know, it started getting momentum, momentum. Was this All when along. Was John Stevens still in the band? Yes. That? Yes. Yeah. All along. And what a singer. Yeah, know? yeah. What an artist. Great noise work. Talented, well, yeah. yeah. All along, there was a few things moving as far as the drummer, chair, and I had commitments with Finn Lissy that I had to fulfill. So we brought in Daryl. I told the guys, listen, I want to stick around. Mm. I love this, but I have to fulfill prior commitments with Finn Lissy. Um, let's get somebody to come in. We called Daryl Jones. He came in Was that from, from Stones? the Stones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who's a friend also? He came in and covered for me. And funny enough, they ended up the first UK run with the Dead Daisies was opening up for Black Star Writers. Which is just, mm. you know. So I, I interviewed John Stevens on that show. It's serendipitous. Yeah. I know. That's the word, right? <laughs> that's a big, that's yeah. a 50 cent <laughs> word. I yeah. didn't even finish high school. It's serendipitous <laughs> how life is in business. Yeah. So they ended up on opening up, and I was dying because I knew the songs and I loved the band. I wanted to play, but I couldn't play with both. Mm. Scott Gorham said, I don't think so. So mm -hmm. I fulfilled the commitment. Also, did you suggest it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and everybody, was on, everybody was on board. The Dead Daisies uh, management to all the players. Management for Thin Lizzy or Black Star Writers was mm -hmm. on board. All the players, I talked to Ricky, I talked to Damon, uh, I talked to uh, uh, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. and they were all, great, man, that would be cool. And then I had the conversation with Scott. <laughs> and Scott, I love him to death, we've been friends forever, but he has a different way of thinking. Yeah. He's not up to date. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, and you can back me up, it would have been a, a, a thing to talk about, I think. Wow, he's playing with the dead, his yeah, new band. Yeah. And he's finishing off. Wow! Do, do you know what? That, that was a really, a really um, cool thing. It was probably about nine or ten years ago when um, <coughs> the, guys Robert Can Tudio. the guys from Kansas, minus um, Steve Walsh, yeah. they had Native Window. Yeah. And they were they opened for Kansas. For Kansas. So they did their own opening show, and then they did the Kansas show. Everybody does it, man. Yeah. Um, Journey, Journey. You know, Neil Sean. Mm. They also called me for that. Neil opens up with his own project where it's fusion and more rockets yeah, heavier. Yeah, that's a, that's a great And idea. people show up. They show mm. up to see that and that. Uh, the Eagles, no, who is it that they do a uh, big band? They go out there real casual and they play songs, covers. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, was it Joe Elliott? Was in the opening up down for Down and Outs? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, Joe, play, he played here last year. At the, yeah, the it's Down and Outs, and then they opened for Def Leppard. Mm. And it works. Yeah. Because it's all about music anyway. And it's, it it's like Mott the Hoople sort of dream, isn't it? Yeah, like, it that's a salute to Mott the Hoople. And there's, anyway, so <laughs> let's just say Scott, the way he put it, he says, Marco, I'm not going to say no, but in a very diplomatic way, but I think it's going to look bad. <laughs> And so I'll leave you with it. Okay, brother, I love you. And then he you know, boom. I was in London, I was in the US, I'm going. So I called the Dead Daisies, I said, management, I said, let me just do this right. I don't want to step on any yeah. toes. And so that's what happened. And so uh, it was uh, the Dead Daisies with Daryl Jones and Charlie mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. came back. And the band sounded great. I got to hear my new band from the yeah. front and I'm like, <laughs> The music yeah. was kicking, it was like, yeah, I could chew on this, you know. So, um, so we, the, the year ended, I believe it's December, and I went off to do my solo things in Italy and Europe and did a few days. And then we started January with, uh, with the Daisies. Mm -hmm. So, next thing you know, I'm in Cuba. Mm. And we're having a blast. And that's when John Stevens had some issues, personal things he was going through. And all of a sudden, we needed a singer. So the point that I'm trying to make is the, the revolving door of artists or the, you know, the, the lineup came from out of necessity yeah. because people had other commitments and we just said, the Dead Daisies is this, 
uh, entity, but people are coming in and out for now because that's just how it's working. Uh, but we had a talk about it last year on the KISS cruise, actually. Mm -hmm. And we all sit down and we wanted to take it to the next level. What's the next level? We'll get the band that's going to tour, record the album, get some solid members in, make it a partnership, la la la. And unfortunately, um, and we were happy for them, you know, Richard, yeah. Richard and Dizzy have, had already been talking to Axel mm -hmm. <coughs> about the GNR thing, this little new band that's up and coming. <laughs> they never catch on. Yeah, yeah, never. <laughs> and so, um, so we, of course, we said we're happy for you. Now, okay, we're glad that you're letting us know so we can make plans. So we got on the horn, mm -hmm. you know, and the first cat I called, I told manager, I'm gonna call Doug Aldridge, he says, yes. I called Doug, and Doug and I have always been working, doing things since the White Snake days, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of sessions and side projects. And he's a great player. Yeah, yeah. And we're real friends. And he's got the, he brings so much. Mm -hmm. Let me just say that, he brings so much to the table. So we started talking, we started the conversation, and he had some prior commitments. Mm -hmm. Uh, you had this gig in Vegas. I had Glenn Hughes as well. The vault, and then he was on tour doing dates with Glenn Hughes, and that was going to be extended. So <clears throat> we're trying to figure it all out. And uh, long story short, it all worked out. Yeah. And we ended up in the studio, and uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, and then the same thing, we decided to pass Dizzy, you know, he's, he moved on. And we wanted to focus more on the guitar, guitar riff. Mm. heavy mm. stuff so we decided to pass on the keyboard mm. if needed we're already talking about in the future we could bring somebody in mm -hmm. but some of us play piano if needed yeah. we could all play so we're so, trying to uh, we're trying to maintain this lineup as long and as far as we can go mm. we're already talking about the next step mm -hmm. which would be a live album uh, live album yes. DVD and we're going to shoot it in in Germany after we leave the UK this year. So, All right, yeah. Oh. So I'm, I'm trying to lose weight. I'm, I'm looking at what wigs I'm going to wear. I'm yeah. looking at this red one that's really long with a gold bustier and the pumps. <laughs> I think it'll work. What do you yeah. think? Go for it. <laughs> the new kids, the new kids go. Yeah. yeah my daughter's 13. She's so, like, yeah, pumps, that sounds great. <laughs> it's got to be done. It's got to be done. I mean, you mentioned the, um, the Kiss Cruise. Where, whereabouts did you go on the cruise? Um, we left Miami and we went to Cozumel, mm -hmm. Mexico, which is one of my favorite places. I, my wife and I go there diving. We haven't done it in a while. Mm. When you have kids, your life changes. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> but for the, for the, be for the better. Yeah. But uh, so it was nice to go back to Cozumel. Uh, mm -hmm. we, went, uh, we went diving and swimming with stingrays. And, mm. Uh, it's gorgeous. And then we went to the Cayman Islands. Oh, that's where the stingrays were in Cayman mm -hmm. Islands. But mm -hmm. Costa Mountains is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And I speak Spanish, so it was it was very cool for me to yeah. come home of sorts. And uh, that was it. We left Costa Mel. Uh, we got off, spent the whole day there, get on, and then we came in, got off, spent the day, and then back. So <coughs> Kiss did their um, Creatures of the Night set, didn't they? They did. It was great. It was so cool. jealous. <laughs> it was very, very cool. Yeah, and the, the tank and everything. Yeah, they are. Uh, uh, you know, I got. I can't give them enough credit, man. They reinvent mm. every every chance they get to give something more to the fans. Yeah. They do it. It's hard work, but they're committed to do that, and that's why they are so successful. Ah, uh, absolutely. And they're great cats, man. Mm. Paul's, Paul's a blast, and Gene's a blast. I've known them since '99, mm -hmm. touring with. Uh, with kids with Ted Nugent. Yeah so, yeah. so I have a relationship there with those cats. And Eric. And er Eric's a nice guy. I've, yeah. I've interviewed him here before and he was at Alice Cooper. And he's great. A, great drummer, singer. What a singer. Mm. You knew, you knew album, Mummy. Did you did you all write together or did you sit down and, and do all the music together? We did. How, how did that work? We did. This is something that, that was also talked about and why, mm -hmm. why it's so cool about this, this band is that we wanted to make sure that everybody is involved in the whole process of it. Mm. And, uh, in order to make it um, a band, a real band, in my eyes, and David Lowy agreed and management agreed and everybody agrees, in order to get a band together, you need to have input from all the members. Yeah. What's happened 
most recently and for the longest time is you have the singer mm -hmm. and the guitar player. Mm. It's their project. Mm -hmm. The writing, they do all the writing, they do all the arranging, arranging. They well not arranging, but they do the writing, and then it's their vision pretty much where you want to go. Mm. And uh, um, which is, in my opinion, you have two points of view. In my opinion, when you get four or five, four, it's wider. Yeah. Everybody has an input on the business side to keep something together, everybody's a partner mm. in every possible way. They're writing, they're publishing, and all that. Mm. So it's a unit, it's a family, everybody benefits. Mm. So it's a real team Yeah. in the sense of it all. It's like we're all together. That's, that's, that's the best way, absolutely the best way. Everything about this band, this project is good, Cause, everything. Because it's your third album in as many years, really, so, you, so you, you, know, you obviously sound like you're in a very rich creative vein at the moment, so it looks like that's going to be continuing. It, it, yeah, and uh, we all walked away going, wow, there's so much in the well. Mm. So much that we haven't even started tapping, to be honest. Mm. This is just the beginning, so yeah. we're happy. Because you, you've always got to have a good, um, a good selection of covers that you've done over, over the years as well. And, you know, fortunate some by Creedence Clearwater Revival. I couldn't think of a better song for John to sing to be quiet. I know. His voice is perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, that's the other thing that the Daisies has. It's become a bit of a tradition mm. to include some covers. And it also, when you think about it, when you're a new band, no matter how good the songs are, people aren't familiar. Mm. You might be familiar with one, mm -hmm. two, and now you have two hours or 80 minutes or 75 or 100 minutes to play. It really helps to throw in a cover that where they, they're familiar and you do a good, good version of it, you perform it, and then you grab them. Midnight Moses as well, yeah. that's another good choice. Yeah. yeah. And, and John brought that one to the table, he's a big fan. <laughs> well Marco, it's been an absolute pleasure as always, um, catching pleasure. over there. And, um, Enjoy the show tonight and the rest of the tour and Absolutely. looking forward to see you back in February, back in Newcastle. Yeah. Maybe we can catch up for another update then. Yeah, please get in touch. You have my info. When you hear the dates, let's do an update yeah. because uh, yeah. we need all the help and all the support. We like to have people show up and see what I do. What I do is, on the rock side, I celebrate you know, my years with some of the bands I've been with. Mm -hmm. I touch on that. It's a little bit of a story thing. And uh, and then I let loose, you know, yeah. a little bit vocally more than anything, mm -hmm. which is what I love. Yeah. Well, it's going to be great. It's going to be great yeah, to see I'm you again. I'm hoping, yeah. and hoping uh, we have some folks out there.